Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the program Towards the Origin. You're watching on Channel S Sky 814 in conversation with Sheikh Qadi Lutfur Rahman, Imam and Khatib of the famously known Masjid London Islamic Centre and Cultural Islamic and Cultural Centre, Sheikh Qadi Lutfur Rahman. We're discussing about the topic of Sha'ban. In fact, we will be discussing more in details about the middle of Sha'ban and 15th of Sha'ban. In our first segment, we have touched upon the virtue of Sha'ban. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam do in in that blessed month of uh, Sha'ban, and what are the attributes, what are the qualities that one should look into, uh, uh, look forward to before the month of Ramadan? Now, Sheikh, before we move on to the um, 15th of Sha'ban, I just wanted to ask you one of the questions that you've earlier mentioned in our previous segment mm -hmm. about evaluation, self evaluation. Yep. Yes. Now, we know when it comes to end of financial year, mm -hmm. end of uh, year, whether it be academic, whether it be Everyone professional life. Positive, negative. Now, yeah. There is an aspect that we have to look what we have done, what mm. was the goal, what Absolute was the aim, right. yep. what did we do, how much did we achieve, and what's the future projection. Very important. And now, as Muslim, mm -hmm. does that not relate that we should evaluate in this particular manner, or is there any special manner or special way that we need Definitely, to evaluate ourselves? I mean, uh, for anything to be improved and enhanced, uh, it needs uh, evaluation, it needs assessment. And therefore, Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab, عنه, he made a very important statement when he said, Hasibu an fusakum qabla an He said, mm -hmm. account very yourself, powerful. account yourself, assess yourself before your Lord assess you, before you, uh, your Lord uh, accounts you. So account yourself qabla an before you assess by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wazinuha qabla an tuzanu, and weigh your amal, weigh your deeds before Allah the Almighty start weighing the deeds. Mm -hmm. So otherwise it will be too late. So I think this is a month when we have to really look into ourselves, like what have we done last year? How much good deeds, how much salah, how much uh, dhikr, how much uh, charity, how much uh, character, how much good behavior, well conducts we have done with other people. And also we have to look how much um, haram uh, we've consumed, how much um, haram uh, we have looked at. Or we were involved with. Involved with. Mm. Uh, all those things. Need to, or maybe like how much um, backbiting did we make or how much slandering and how much uh, uh, abusive and swearing words we have used. All those things we need to really calculate and see where we went wrong and how we can improve for the following year. Mm. And that, therefore, Umar bin Khattab said, Hasibu anfusakum. Um, now, just to break it a little bit more further down, now it will be sometimes difficult, for example, at workplaces we've got files, folders, mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. all preserved. Yes. Now, with that life on a daily, day to day basis, mm -hmm. every single time, every single moment, mm -hmm. well, well, uh, forgive us. We are involved with some sort of um, activity that not might that might not be deemed as mm -hmm. correct or mm -hmm. part of the Sharia. Mm -hmm. Now. Can we not assess ourselves every day, maybe every day, weekly, yes. monthly? Yes, uh, originally the practice of the pious people or the salihin, they actually every day they have a, a specific time for self-assessment. So they sit down and they do ihtisab to themselves. Like what have I done wrong today? What have I done good? What have I done wrong? All those things like they calculate. And of course for us, uh, if not possible every day, at least there should be some time during the year when we must evaluate ourselves, and, uh, and this is really important. And should not our aim be that our tomorrow should be better than yesterday? Uh, of course, indeed, and that's that's how. Uh, I mean, without any assessment, like nothing can improve. And amal as salih or the good or the deeds generally need this kind of evaluation. Now, before we are uh, we uh, we run out of our time, we need to touch upon the important topic, which is very vast and also yeah, um, can be controversial to some people. Now, the before we, night of I, I know, before we move into that, mm. there are certain things we have to be careful. Now, mm. we know that there is a very um, it, it's it's a, it's a topic and a discussion mm. which is very sensitive. Sensitive, uh, yep. but it's not yeah. only to mm. our community, mm. even to other uh, other communities, wider yes, community yes, as yes. well. Mm. Uh, now. First of all, to begin that topic now, my understanding, I mean, how do we even address this issue? Because now okay. some people want a direct answer. Mm. I, see, I see it as, um, as actually is sensitive, but in fact it's not. Originally it's not sensitive. It's just we people it has have been made, made it sensitive. It has been yeah. made. Hmm. It has been made or it has been made a, 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 an important or, or a warm issue uh, or a hot topic. But uh, inshallah, when we discuss, things will be much more easy to understand. Now, uh, first of all, we look at the name. In our community, people know this night as Shab Barat. So Shab is a Farsi, Farsi or the Persian word, which means night. Shab Barat means the night of Bara'a. Bara'a means to free oneself 
from the sins or from uh, from sin, uh, from the sins that committed. So bara'a to be to be free. So okay. that means it's not an Arabic word. No, bara'a is Arabic, okay. but shab is um, is Persian. It's a mixture shab. of both the so language. So shab bara'a, like we have namaz, we've got other words. Islamic, a lot of Islamic terms are taken from Persian language. Mm -hmm. So we've got namaz, we've got other things that are not actually Arabic originally, and there's no problem. So now shab bara'a is in Arabic or in the or according to Hadith, it's called Laylatun Nisf Min Shaban, according to the prophetic statements and mentioned in the books of Hadith. Laylatun Nisf Min Shaban, which means the fifteenth night of Shaban. So this is what um, in uh, in the Hadith of Rasulullah SAW said, Laylatun Nisf Min Shaban. So after we understand the words, there's no any problems with the language and words. There's no any problem from Sharia because people can't use different language to describe different things. Um, now, we have, first of all, we touch upon the Qur'an. Is there anything uh, in Qur'an which indicates about Laylatul Bara'a or the Laylatul Nisf in Shaban or 15th night of Shaban? Now, we see one verse which sometimes some of the scholars, they mention in the court. And the verse in Surah Al-Dukhan where it says, Inna anzalna fi Laylatin Mubaraka, inna kunna munzirin. Allah Taala said in this verse that we have revealed this Quran in a blessed night. We have revealed this Quran in a blessed night. Now, according to the vast majority commentators of the Holy Quran, is the night of Qadr, which is the night of decree, twenty seventh night of, 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 of Ramadan. Mm. But there is some scholars, and when you look at the tafsir like Ibn Kathir and Jalalain, you'll find. Uh, almost all the commentators they mention that there is a view which says that it's Laylatul Nisr min Shaban, 15th night of Shaban. Now, just a little yeah. bit um, I have yeah. add there to mm -hmm. add to the discussion. Mm -hmm. Now, t some people say to now 27 of Ram. So, is it confirmed that 27 of Ram? Ram, Ram no, it, no. Again, uh, again, it's uh, so. Again, the confirmation yeah. is that it's in the Laylatul Qadr. That's it. That's okay. another thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Laylatul Qadr. But what I wanted to mention that we cannot completely deny that there is no any opinions such as Laylatul Nusr min Sha'ban. Uh, uh, you know, that, that verse in Surah Al-Dukhan, some scholars mention, this is amana, this is the trust of knowledge, you must deliver and mention. That some scholars did mention, however, the stronger opinion is that Laylatul Qadr. That's what the majority, the, of, the, nights. Yeah, a mm. majority of the commentators of the Holy Quran said the Quran was revealed in Laylatul Qadr, in the night of Qadr, and not night of, of, of uh, 15th night of Sha'ban, although some suggested, or although some mentioned. Now, after the verse in the Holy Quran, let's look at the prophetic statements. Now, there is a hadith mentioned in the book of Al Imam Al Bayhaqi, Fi Shu'ab Al Iman, an Abi Tha'laba Al Khashani radiallahu anhu. He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abu Tha'laba Al Khashani said, um, said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إذا كان ليلة النصف من شعبان اطلع الله سبحانه وتعالى إلى خلقه. If the fifteenth night of شعبان arrives, then Allah the Almighty He comes close to the, to His creation. He comes to the seven sky, close to His creation. فيغفر للمؤمنين and He forgives believers. He forgives the believers. فيغفر للمؤمنين ويملي للكافرين and he leaves obviously um, and he postpones uh, the uh, disbelievers and then he said ويدع أهل الحقد بحقدهم حتى يدعوه and then he said he also put the people of hatred aside those who have hatred in their hearts those who have a lot of حقد in their hearts uh, uh, corrupt hearts uh, they are also left aside and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't forgive them on in that night. Hatta yada'u until they depart and until they get rid of their uh, corruption or the or the hatred that they have. This hadith uh, is mentioned in the book of also Imam al-Tabrani and this is one hadith which is also considered as Hassan accepted hadith even by Imam uh, al-Albani rahimahullah who was a contemporary scholar of hadith. Wahassanahu um, al-Albani rahimahullah. So this is a hadith related to the 15th night of Shaban, and that's uh, almost all the scholars are agreed that this is a Sahih uh, or, or a, a Hassan hadith, which means um, slightly uh, lower grade than probably um, Sahih, but still accepted, and, it's, um, uh, and scholars have no problems in uh, practicing upon this hadith. We also find more than uh, one narration. So we find also in another hadith, 
من صحيح الجامع السيد إن الله تعالى لا يطلع في ليلة النصف من شعبان فيغفر لجميع خلقه إلا لمشرك أو مشاحن uh, الله سبحانه وتعالى he comes again to the lowest um, sky in the night in the 15th night of شعبان and he forgives the believers uh, he forgives most of the people most of the creation the, the believers إلا لمشرك except the one who commits shirk except the one who is involved in associating partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mushahin and the one who cuts the relationship with other people or the one who have hatred or disconnect with others. We also find another statement um, in the uh, book of Imam Muslim rahimahullah on the authority of uh, Urwa uh, and he said that Aisha radiallahu anha once she lost the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during one night. She, she couldn't find, she missed uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَخَرَجْتُ أَطْلُبَ And she said that I went out to search for him, to find where, where, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. فَإِذَا هُوَ بِالْبَقِيَ Then I ended up uh, with uh, the Baqiyah, the Jannatul Baqiyah, the, the famous graveyard cemetery in Medina al-Manawwara. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was there. And then he said, رَافِعُ uh, She said, رَافِعُ رَأْسَهُ His head was towards the sky. And um, he was making dua. فَقَالَ يَا عَائِشَ Then Prophet ﷺ, when he saw Aisha was there, she um, arrived in Baqiyah. Prophet ﷺ said, and um, he was surprised to see Aisha. Um, he said, يَا عَائِشَ عَائِشَ أَكُنْتِ تَخَافِينَ أَنْ يَحِيفَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ Do you think that the, Prophet, the Holy Prophet would do wrong to you? Or he would, uh, he, he would, be, he would do something like bad to you? أكنت تخافين أن يحيف الله عليك ورسوله قالت قد قلت وما بذلك then she said I have said that no that is not the case ولكني ظننت أنك أتيت بعض بعض نسائك أو بعض نسائك then um, uh, I thought that she said I thought that you came to some 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 of your wives the other wives um, you came to them فقال إن الله تعالى ينزل ليلة النصف من شعبان then he said while he was in Baqiya, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he comes to the lowest sky um, of this world uh, in the night, 15th night of Sha'ban. He said that he forgives people more than the hairs of the Kalb tribe's um, ship. So meaning like the ships uh, which were owned by the, the tribe Kalb, it was very they, were, they used to be very hairy. So Prophet Sallallahu said that he forgives lots of people, meaning uncountable people, even more than the number of the hairs which is on the um, shapes of the uh, tribe Kalb, Bani Kalb. Uh, so again, this hadith, it has uh, uh, some sort of some issues with the, with the Sanad, the chain of narration. So consider it as da'if or the weak hadith. So when we f scrutinize all the hadith related to uh, uh, Sha'ban or 15th night of Sha'ban, we find one or two are considered as Sahih, as we have mentioned earlier, even Imam Al-Bani, he considered as Sahih. Uh, we find the others are also considered as Da'if. And now, Da'if, many you mean of weak us, hadith. many mm. or weak hadith, many of us we think Da'if means it's just rejected. That, that is not the case in the science of hadith. And those who study the science of hadith properly, they will be able to say or understand properly. Now, da'if, obviously, a hadith to be weak it has many reasons. Now, just let's talk about the ruling of practicing upon the weak hadith. What does he say? What do the, what do the scholars of hadith say about practicing, uh, uh, practicing the weak hadith or hadith which are mentioned with weak narrations now before you move on to that mm -hmm. i just wanted to have a clarification mm -hmm. there now as a layman mm -hmm. commonly as human being how would they differentiate whether this is sahih or because, uh, no, because that's there's it. always a contest yes there. so th th that's now, from a common person yes. what should he do yes exactly so our scholars as i said if we understand the difference of opinions amongst the scholars whether they're scholars of fiqh or scholars of tafsir or scholars of hadith we will have lots of tension will be reduced. A lot of problems would, would reduce. A lot of tension would reduce because these are matter of difference of opinions amongst the scholars. Now I would like to mention about uh, the ruling of uh, practicing uh, or what is the ruling of practicing on, on weak hadith according to the scholars of hadith. Now Imam al-Nawwi he said, 
قدمنا اتفاق العلماء على العمل بالحديث الضعيف في فضائل الأعمال. إمام النووي رحمه الله يسير إن المجموع that um, practicing uh, upon the hadith which are considered as weak and not too weak because even the weak has different categories because this is the science of hadith and not everyone can understand as you said and even people like us we find hard to understand so bil hadith al daif fi fadail al so imam al-nawi said the scholars have agreed upon the issue of practicing upon the weak hadith if they are related to fadail al-a'mal virtuous deeds mm -hmm. so they're not related to any fard or wajib or they're not related to haram or anything but they just talk about like if you do this act, this act, then you will get this reward, this amount, this reward. So these are only virtuous deeds. They are optional amal. So Imam not, is you mean not directly linked with the ibadat? N n no, no, not directly linked with the fard or wajib okay. or the rules and regulations or the commandments of Islam. But they just fard. Like for example, if you pray two rakat salah, you will get this reward. Hmm. This is not to say that you, it's fard or wajib or anything. So you cannot derive the uh, Islamic rulings from the da'if hadith according to the majority of the scholars uh, but they said that you can do you can practice and you can take them and accept them in virtuous deeds virtuous amal وقال ابن المفلح الحنبلي في الآداب الشرعية another scholar from the Hanbali school uh, ابن مفلح he said والذي قطع به غير واحد ممن صنف في علوم الحديث حكاية عن العلماء أنه يعمل بالحديث الضعيف فيما ليس فيه تحليل ولا تحريم كالفضائل ابن المفلح also said in his kitab الآداب الشرعية he said that um, uh, a big number of the scholars they um, agreed that the weak hadith can be practiced in terms of or, or uh, if they're related to the virtuous deeds fadail al-a'mal and then are related to haram or halal so again ibn mufli said the same thing وقال محمد بن الحطاب المالكي another scholar from the Malik school he said في مواهب الجليل in his book مواهب الجليل he said اتفق العلماء على جواز العمل بالحديث الضعيف في فضائل الأعمال the scholars have agreed upon the uh, permissibility of practicing the weak hadith in fadail al-a'mal, in virtuous deeds. Now, we find on the other side, there's another group of scholars of hadith who said that it is better not to practice upon the weak hadith. But there is a big number of scholars, those who, and they're the scholars, early scholars of hadith, and even the contemporary scholars of hadith, they said that you can accept the hadith which are weak and not too weak, because weak have also the categories. You can take them and accept them, as long as they're with, within the framework or within the limits of fadail, virtuous deeds. Mm -hmm. So now, some of our um, ulama, unfortunately, we find that they just mention one opinion and they, they never mention and they reject or never mention the other opinion, which creates a huge amount of tension in our society. We see like certain things. For example, look at the Laylatul Nusr in Sha'ban, 15th night of Sha'ban, for example. It has been practiced throughout the centuries. Now, when somebody comes at this time and says, oh, there's nothing like that in Hadith, or there's nothing like this in Quran, then people like majority, like all over the world, they get completely confused. Mm -hmm. I think just to add a little yeah. bit of fairness there, mm -hmm. I mean, when people say that now we do hear a lot mm -hmm. of um, issues when it comes to a certain act mm -hmm. of salah there, certain number of rak'ahs there. I will come to that. Yeah. Certain, you know, certain the, aspect that, that need to be addressed. Of, yeah, certain yeah. aspect of mm -hmm. uh, deeds that no, are only performed specifically mm -hmm. on that of night. Of course, that needs so to be addressed. Definitely. We'll come to that. But to say that there is nothing like that or it's bid'ah, innovation, I would say it's completely unfair because the, there are had mentioned in the books of hadith. And I'll tell you also what are, uh, what are the, uh, what is the opinion of our scholars like fuqaha, like the great jurist, because they understood Quran and Sunnah better than anybody at this time. So let's see. ذهب جمهور الفقهاء من المذاهب الأربعة المتبوعة إلى استحباب إحياء ليلة النصر من شعبان. That majority of the scholars from all four schools, they have said that it is mustahab to uh, revive the night of Sha'ban, meaning to worship and to may, uh, remember uh, remember Allah and to make dua, to do all those like um, recommended acts. But does it not mean that we should not only be restricting ourselves to that particular night, but in fact in our whole day-to-day -day life, on um, every no, day we should... No one, said that, that. no one said that this should be restricted, but we find some days are slightly more virtuous mm. than the other days. Some nights are slightly virtuous than the other nights. So we take slightly more seriously than other normal, ordinary nights. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, who is accepted by a big number of contemporary scholars, and he was a alim, he was a you know, faqih, and he was a great scholar. 
He himself mentioned in his book, uh, in, in, in his Majmu'at uh, Al-Fatawa, he said, وَأَمَّا لَيْلَةُ النَّسْفِ مِنْ شَعْبَانِ فَقِيهَا فَضْلٍ He said, yes, during the night of Sha'ban, 15th night of Sha'ban, there is virtues. And then he said, وَكَانَ فِي السَّلَفِ مَنْ يُصَلِّ فِيهَا Amongst the predecessors Salaf who would practice and who would worship during that night. Then he said, لَكِنَ الْإِجْتِمَاعِ فِيهَا لِإِحْيَائِهَا فِي الْمَسْجِدِ بِدْعَةِ He said that, but together and to stay up during the whole night in, a, in masjid, in congregation, that is bid'ah. I mean, even sometimes in some masajid, we see the poems are being recited uh, loud, instead of yeah. we know the yeah. importance of reading the Quran. Now, of course, and I will come to those points where we see things that we shouldn't do. But we're just talking about right now whether it's ha existed or not. Because sometimes some of us, especially younger generation, start to believe there's nothing like that. We need to obviously address the wrong things. We cannot deny or reject the full whole entire issue, mm. but because of because of certain wrong actions. Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah said again. Imam al-Shafi'i said, "Balaghana anna du'a yustajabu fi khams layal." He said that the du'as are accepted during five nights: Laylat al-Jum'ah, night of Yom al-Jum'ah, Friday; wal-Eidain, nights of two Eids. And then he said, "Awwal Rajab, the night of the first Rajab." ونصف شعبان and the night of the 15th night of شعبان that's according to Imam الشافعي رحمة الله عليه I mean we can find all over the Muslim world that this has been practiced uh, and as I said the scholars of hadith they gave the opinion and if anybody has doubt in any any of my statement then you can by yourself you can look into the issue of uh, permissibility of practicing upon weak hadith you'll find Always you'll find even the major websites also mention that uh, Islamic websites mention that there is an opinion like where the Mahadithin, the scholars of Hadith permitted uh, the, uh, the permissibility of practicing upon weak Hadith as long as they're not too weak. And they have some conditions as well. Uh, but also one other thing, when too many weak Hadiths gather, then this gives a strength of Hassan or strength of, of a sound Hadith. This is another matter as well. So when you have about 10 hadith and they're all weak maybe, then this gives a strength. It's called Hassan li ghayrihi in the science of hadith. It gives a strength of like a sahih hadith. Because when somebody comes and tells you, 10 people come and tell you an incident, but you doubt, you have a slight minor doubt in 10 of them. But when 10 people come and tell you, oh, there has to be something. It cannot be completely a made-up story. Because 10 people said, even though they may not be fully, fully 100%. Could it not be yeah. possible that 10 people can have listened from the other 10 people or from the same people? That's mm -hmm. why it has been linked together. Um, no, what I mean to say that if someone, for example, an accident took uh, a card, like someone came and told you that, you know, accident happened. Now you doubt in him. Then another person came. Then another. When 10 people come, even though you have slightly doubt in them, but you still have an idea that something definitely happened. Even if one person comes and tells us, mm. and when we say that scholars of hadith, when they say weak, they would say if someone maybe like just stood up and passed his urine one day, then they'll say I wouldn't take hadith from him. They would consider this weak. So their criteria of accepting hadith was very strict. It's not like the way we think. But generally speaking, again, Laylatul Nusm and Shaban, what should we be doing if we do, if we are convinced to practice or revive that night? The scholars, they said, what should be done during that night is salah, number one. Obviously, extra nafal prayers um, um, should be offered. There is not any specific type of prayer, as some people think. Uh, as some people think that there are some specific prayers for the uh, Shabbat Barat or Laylatul Nisrim and Sha'ban. There is not any specific prayers, but generally, nafal salah can be offered. Also, tilawatul Qur'an, the, the, the Qur'an came, can be recited. Also, dhikr, the remembrance of Allah, and most importantly, du'as, the supplication need to be made. I mean, there are some discussion or suggestions that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finalizes everything what will happen next year on that particular night. Again, there are statements, uh, um, uh, because, you know, this, this is again, we go back to the verse that we mentioned. فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ This actually was meant for Laylatul Qadr. But as I said, some minority hmm. commentators indicated or referred to the Laylatul Nisrim in Sha'ban, which obviously weaker opinion than the other one. Yeah, now I'm slightly conscious about the time. We're coming towards the end of okay, our... Okay, what our shouldn't be done? Now, yes, yeah. if you can touch on that with yes. 10 seconds, and yes. I'll have my final question. Now, the thing is, some of us, we made that night as a night of celebration, a night of decoration, a night of, like, you know, putting Lighting. lights, decoration. We hmm. see in the Muslim world, unfortunately. These are obviously bid'ah innovations are... 
uh, initiated by again like business people some of the business people they have interest in, in business and also uh, the people of uh, of ignorance uh, the jahili uh, those who have jahil and they've taken it to is it not some sort of ritual it has turned into ritual, some sort of ritual yes. and again also people would never do anything during the whole year and just that night they will come the whole and night they might even miss as well they might even miss fajr so all those things are there so decorating lighting celebration even gathering the whole night also according to some scholars that is bid'ah and it shouldn't it shouldn't happen Specifying. most importantly one to one ibadah we focus on the on one to one ibadah if there is a gathering, then it should be for nasiha, maybe speech, just to be reminded, because some people are uh, more uh, keen on listening on during the night. Just for the for the mawdh, mm -hmm. and wa'ad. But uh, the ibadah should be done individually, one-to-one, -one, and this is a mm one-to-one -hmm. -one connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No special prayers, no special food. Is there special rakats associated with that night that you have to read that many rakats? No, 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 Just general du'as, mm -hmm. prayers, general nothing specific the continuation yes, of our general yes. ibadah even though they may be mentioned in some hadith but i, I must say that these are very weak and, and not accepted inshallah uh, for enlightening us and sharing your valuable thoughts uh, on that uh, i hope our viewers have benefited from it and people must not make laylatul uh, 15 night of shaban a matter of disunity if someone's can, if if a brother or a sister convinced to worship during the night, let him do or let her do. And if someone's convinced to not do, and they they think they should, they want don't want to do, then that's fine as well. I think we must respect each other's views and unity and love of the Muslim Ummah above everything else. Correct. So Jazak. this is very important priority. Thank you very much uh, once again for your beautiful nasiha and sharing your and and, uh, thoughts. Barakallah fikum. With this, my dear viewers, we have come to the end of our tonight's program. The Sheikh has concluded one very important aspect, unity, the unity of Ummah. Now, let's let, let me touch on something very important here, which the Sheikh has also discussed in his uh, discussion. There is a difference between having a difference of opinion and making it a division of opinion. I've, told, I've discussed it several times, and just to reiterate it, people can have, scholars can have difference of opinion, but that does not mean they ever said for us to have division from that opinion. We have to all understand there would be scholars, there would be school of thought that might have different sort of opinion, but our main goal and aim should be that we should work for one purpose goal. That should be, we should be united, and especially at a time of calamity, at a time where we live now, it's very challenging. We should always aim that we all stay united. These small issues that were well, minor issues that we have can we can easily sort it out and let's not even extend it let's not extend the hatred for these small differences let's work together and minimize this and the other important um, aspect of it if someone wants to continue their worship let's continue our worship instead of specifying a particular night yes there might be some nights or days that are more maksus, that are more special but why don't we continue those acts why don't we continue the act of ibadah, whether it be sunnah, whether it be nafal? And especially as the Sheikh have mentioned, that there was Rasulullah after the blessed month of Ramadan, he used to fast more in the blessed month of Sha'ban. Let's, let's continue this, inshallah, and revive the sunnah. With this, we have come to the conclusion of our tonight's program. Inshallah, we will see you again in our near, near next future episode. Till we meet again, Subhanakallahumma bihamdika, Shadu wa la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Oh, yeah. Barakallah. Barakallah. Barakallah.